All right, so we're going to start with a review of Riemann sums. Um, here we have a table that gives me x and y, or x and f of x values. Draw those points and use the table to compute a right and a trapezoidal Riemann sum to estimate the area under the curve between 0 and 2. Pause the video now for about three or four minutes while you compute those Riemann sums. The answer to the previous problem as well as this one is going to be on Edmodo. Part of your homework tonight, because there's not a lot of homework out of the book, is to check your work with the answers on Edmodo. This problem is a little bit different than the previous ones we've done because now it says, given the intervals in the table below, use a left Riemann sum. And the key to this problem is we're going to do a left Riemann sum, but the widths are going to be variable. Right, you see that the first rectangle has a width of 2, the next rectangle will only have a width of 1, then 3, then 1. Pause the video for 2-3 to three minutes while you do this left Riemann sum. We're going to talk today about the definite integral. All right, the definite integral basically just means the area under the curve. The, de the difference between a definite integral and an indefinite integral are these numbers right here. Anytime you have numbers right by that integral sign, that's how you know it's a definite integral. Those numbers are called limits of integration. All right, limits of integration. We know that f of x is the thing we're integrating. That's the integrand, and dx is the dummy variable. The limits of integration sort of bound the area under the curve, because if I just took the area under a curve, it would be infinite, because the cur curve could go on forever and ever. What the limits tell me is, hey, we're starting, I want you to look at the area starting at A and going to B. So those are two X values where I'm trying to find the area under the curve from A to B. So when we see a, a definite integral like this, the integral from 1 to 4 of 2x plus 3, that says what is the area under the curve starting at x equals 1 going to x equals 4 of the line 2x plus 3. We're going to do geometric integration, especially with linear equations. All right, so if I were to draw the function, here's my function starting here, has a y-intercept of positive 3, slope of positive 2. I want to find the area under the curve starting at 1 and going to 4. So I want to find the area of this shaded region here. Well, that's just simply a trapezoid, right? It's like a trapezoidal Riemann sum, but there's no extra area, there's no overlap, there's no underlap, it's actually just perfect. So to do this, all I need to do is find this height here and this height here and plug it into my trapezoid formula. If I plug in 1 to the function, I'd get 1 comma 5, I'd get 4 comma 11. So I use my trapezoid formula, I'm using geometry, I know that this area is going to be equal to the height, which is 3, times the average of the bases, which is 5 plus 11 over 2. So this area is going to be equal to 24. Go ahead and graph this line and use geometry to find the area under the curve or evaluate the definite integral.
So there's the graph of my line. I'm trying to find this area shaded here from 0 to 4. So again, I've got a trapezoid. The trapezoid has height of 4 and average of the bases, which is 1 plus 9 over 2. So the area under this curve is 20. A really important concept is that area under the x-axis is negative. So this area from A to B would be a positive number. If I were to take the integral from A to B, I would get a positive number. But if I were to take the integral from B to C, that would give me a negative number. So above the x-axis is positive area, below the x-axis is negative area, and that's hard for some people because we don't like to think about area as being negative. What is What would negative area even mean? But when I'm evaluating a definite integral, if it's below the x-axis, that number is going to be counted as negative. So we take that into account when I'm evaluating the integral. If I wanted to find the area under the curve between 0 and 4 of this line, I would graph it. And I would realize, wait a second, this actually isn't one shape, it's two. It crosses this x-axis at 3. So there are really two areas here. There's the positive area from 1 to 3, and then there's this negative area from 3 to 4. So I know that this height up here is 9, so the first triangle is 1 half base 3 times height 9. The other rectangle has a negative value, so I'm going to subtract 1 half base 1 times height, which would be this height right here, 3. So I get 27 halves minus 3 halves, or the area under the curve would be 12. Go ahead and graph this line and use geometry to evaluate the indefinite integral from negative 2 to 3. So again, we have negative area down here and positive area up here. So i got to evaluate the two triangles together. This height is 12 with a width of, or base of 4. This is 1 with height of 3. So the area would be the negative area of 1 half the base 4 times the height 12 plus positive 1 half the base 1 times the height 3. So I'd have negative 24 plus 3 halves or
negative 22.5. Absolute value problems work the exact same way. I'm just going to graph the absolute value. And remember, I, I'm not very good at shifts. You might not be very good at translations either. So I'm just going to graph the area that I need to look at. All right. I'm going to graph the absolute value in the area I need to look at. So I know when I plug in 0, I get out 1. When I plug in 1, I get out 0. When I plug in 2, I get 1. When I plug in 3, I get 2. When I plug in 4, I get 3. So those are the only, that's the only portion of this absolute value I'm concerned with. So I see the two triangles here. The first one, the smaller one, has height 1, base 1. The next one has base 3, height 3. So I get 1 half base times height plus 1 half base times height. And that lets me evaluate this definite integral at positive 5. I'll give you a minute to graph and find the area under the curve of this absolute value. All right, remember, I only care about from 1 to 4, so that's all I'm going to graph. When I plug in 1, I get out 2. When I plug in 2, I get out 0. When I plug in 3, I get out 2. When I plug in 4, I get out 4. So again, I've got two triangles. The height of this one is 2, base 1. The, height, the base of this one is 2, height 4. So I do 1 half base times height for the first one and 1 half base times height for the second one and I get out positive 5. Sometimes they give me piecewise functions like something that looks like this. And people that have problems with these questions have a tendency to get wrapped up in what's the function what's the function obviously this is a piecewise function and we do not need to know what the function the original function was all we need to know is the area under the curve from negative three to zero so don't get wrapped up in what's the function the function is the picture all i need to find is the area starting here ending at this point here. So I need to find this shaded area. In order to do that, obviously it's geometry because these are all rectangles, trapezoids, uh, circles, and triangles. So me personally, I'm not great with trapezoids, so I am probably going to split this up as you will. You're probably going to want to split this up into this rectangle and that triangle. The rectangle has height 2, width 2, so that's 4. The triangle has height 2, base 1, so that's 1. So adding those together, the area under the curve would be 5.
I want you to use geometry to evaluate the area under the curve or the integral from negative 5 to 0 of this function f of x, remembering that area under the x-axis is negative. If you're like me and not great with trapezoids, you probably split it up like this. We've already found this area to be 4 and this area to be 1. This base would be 1 and height 2, so that is positive 1. This base would be 1 and height 2, so this would be negative 1. So this also turns out to be positive 5. This is where people really have a tendency to freak out about what's the original function, what's the original function. If I want to find the area from 0 to 2, we're talking about this shaded area right here. And again, trying to find the original equation and finding the antiderivative, way, way, way too complicated. It's a semicircle, right? The area of a circle is pi r squared. Well, that's half a circle, so the area of that thing is going to be one-half pi r squared. They give me the diameter of this thing. This length is 2, so r is 1. So if I plug in 1 to my equation, that indefinite integral is evaluated as pi over 2. And that's a perfectly acceptable answer. Pi is a number as well. Tonight, I want you to go on Edmodo and check your warm-up against the answer key, and then complete the following problems. Remember, the answers to those homework problems, as well as my work, will be available on Edmodo. And if you have any questions, use the comment section on Edmodo to ask me. Have a good day.